And another issue drawing attention at the Capitol is the TBI's handling of rape kits. Governor Bill Lee has taken steps to expand hiring at the Bureau's forensic labs, but some say more needs to be done. In the wake of Eliza Fletcher's kidnapping and murder back in September, State Representative Antonio Parkinson has introduced a bill requiring the TBA to test rape kits within 30 days. Earlier this week, he told some of his colleagues in the House that they share some of the blame for Fletcher's death. We as leaders in our state are partially to blame for the death of Eliza Fletcher and the delay in justice to all rape survivors because in 2014, we had the ability and the financial wherewithal to ensure that rape kits were turned around within 30 days, but we did not have the will to make it a priority, nor the will to make the safety of our citizens a priority. And Representative Parkinson joins us live right now on Live at 9. Representative Parkinson, thank you for joining us. First and foremost, let's talk a little bit more about the genesis of this bill, especially involving the names Eliza Fletcher and Alicia Franklin. How did this all come about for you? You know, in 2014, we ran legislation to ensure that TBI would test uh, rape kits within 30 days. The bill passed through every committee and it got to the Finance Committee where it was stalled and put behind the budget and left there to die. In that process, Cleotha Abstin, seven years later, was, was accused of raping Alicia Franklin. The DNA evidence was provided. It took one year for that DNA evidence to be tested and turned back around to law enforcement. But in, before that year, Cleotha Abstin had um, um, murdered Eliza Franklin, I mean, Eliza Fletcher, and because that evidence was not turned around in, that, in 30 days as that law would have provided, we are partially responsible for the death of Eliza Fletcher. And you say the state owes it to the victims to do the right thing. What do you mean? You know, the state, is our job is to protect our citizens. And, and we are doing a terrible job in protecting our citizens. Because again, in 2014, when we ran the same legislation, we had the financial ability to fund that bill. But we chose not to make that a priority in, in making sure that we protect all of our citizens from, from the, the horrific crimes of rape and sexual assault by making sure that, that those uh, victims receive the justice that they should receive as soon as possible, as quickly as possible, as swiftly as possible. Now, Representative, another piece of this is also the cost. There's estimates that this could cost anywhere between three and a half to five million dollars a year. Uh, is that enough? Would it help? We have two billion dollars in the rainy day fund, and I'll let that sit right there. And, and do you think, though, your bill, I know some colleagues are already saying this might hinder some other investigations already going on out there. What do you say to them? I say that we owe it to our women, our children, and those victims of sexual assault and rape whose lives will forever be changed because of the incidents or the, the horrificness of the incidents that they've gone through, we owe it to them to ensure that they are a priority. And I submit to you also, it doesn't mean that there is just a steady um, um, uh, influx of, of rape kits that are gonna be submitted. Sometimes you have more in one month, sometimes you have less. You know, everything will balance out. And and if needed, then we need to hire more people at the TBI to ensure that all victims of crime, are um, their, their testing is done in a timely fashion. Because you have people that are sitting, waiting, not just those that are accused of rape, but those that will be exonified from an accusation of rape or murder or any other crime that deserves testing. Now, I'll tell you another thing, too. We are wasting resources because TBI is also tied up with testing marijuana to see if marijuana is actually marijuana. This, this could be eliminated by state law in order to make sure that TBI can test those uh, uh, DNA tests that actually arise to violent crime. Well, now that we are one step closer, it has passed subcommittee. Are you feeling hopeful? Do you feel like now is the time where we can actually see this pass all the way through? I'm cautiously optimistic, you know, even in the subcommittee, after telling the story of Eliza Fletcher and, and discussing how important this piece of legislation is, we still had two members that voted against it. I'm cautiously, cautiously optimistic. A lot of times those things that seem like they're common sense up here at the state legislature don't actually turn out to be common sense to some of the members.
Very interesting. One last thing, uh, Representative Parkinson, you may have heard off the top of this newscast, a heated debate at the Shelby County Commission yesterday when it comes to uh, reparations for slavery. Uh, whether or not you've heard all that debate, what are your thoughts on this measure? I applaud the Shelby County Commission for their courage, for their political courage to put this effort forward is, is needed, is long past due. And I'm thankful to our county commissioners who have uh, voted to put that money aside to ensure that reparations are studied for our people. So Representative right. Antonio Parkinson, thank you very much for your time and your service. We do appreciate it. Thank you for joining thank us this morning. Thank you, Shay.